So what's the best way to plan and budget for your PC build? You're gonna get a lot of different opinions on this, and there's not necessarily one right answer, but I found as I watched other people's recommended builds that came out lately around the $1,500 price point, that I would recommend going a different route, or at least consider going a different route. So let's right, hop right into my brilliant build recommendation as soon as we take a look at my brilliant sponsor. I actually turn down tons of sponsorship deals on this channel because I don't always support the products, but Brilliant has reached out to me to sponsor the video today, and I couldn't be more excited because as a high school math teacher who has a master's degree in education, I can firmly stand by all of the educational philosophy that goes into Brilliant. And like the best way to learn is to actively engage in the problem solving, especially in a low pressure environment where you can experiment, but you also have scaffolded support and hints if you need them. And this is exactly how Brilliant works. I'm so excited. I have checked out their geometry course and I, I primarily teach geometry this year. And it is, it's, it's great. I, I love it. I think anybody can learn through this system and they have other fields available as well. If math is not what you're looking to learn, how about computer science? I know uh, subscribers to my channel may be interested in learning some computer science topics, maybe cryptocurrency. There's a lot of interesting stuff here. I encourage you to check it out. Go to brilliant.org slash Daniel Owen, and my first 200 subscribers to sign up through there will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Okay, so I've thrown together a PC part picker list, and this comes in right around $1,500. And I'm gonna tell you why I chose these parts and where you could increase or decrease the budget and the kind of effect that that would have on your build. So the main thing we need to understand is, should we be budgeting more towards the CPU or more towards the GPU? And also, where should our motherboard budget end up? because I think the main difference between what I'm gonna recommend here and what you might see recommended on other channels at the same price point is I'm not gonna overspend, or at least what I consider overspending on the CPU if we're targeting a gaming build. But when I say targeting gaming, I'm saying targeting AAA gaming and really good performance in esports titles. But if you're primarily gaming for esports titles, you might want to consider shifting to faster RAM, maybe even cut back on the 32 gigabytes in order to uh, get faster timings, that kind of a thing. And again, even spending more on the CPU because as you're in games that are lighter on the GPU workload, you're more likely to be CPU and RAM bottlenecked. But as you're playing graphically demanding titles, with the settings turned up and at increasingly higher resolutions, like 1440p or even going up into 4K, you're more likely to be limited by your GPU. So investing the money in the GPU is usually going to be the best bang for your buck on your actual gaming performance um, compared to putting that same money into a CPU or a GPU. So why did I end up choosing the i5-12400F? Well, to be honest, I, I priced out going with AMD here with their Ryzen 5600, which is also great value. Although the best deal I could find on it was $185, whereas the 12400F comes in at 170. Now, the main difference price-wise you'll actually get between them is that the decent motherboards for the i5 are actually a little bit more expensive. And this combo is actually coming in more expensive than one of the cheapest alternatives I could get for the 5600. Although there were some main drawbacks to the motherboards that are actually cheaper than this. If you go down to around $100 on the, um, on the AMD motherboards, you will have some trade-offs. Um, sometimes they won't have the four RAM slots or you might not be confident it's gonna support the Ryzen 5000 series out of the box. And the cheaper ones might not have BIOS flashback with a USB. You might need to have an older CPU to do the upgrade. So there's a lot of reasons why I went this route, including performance. So this is from TechSpot over here, not my own benchmarks. Uh, but what we're actually looking at is the is the performance of the Ryzen 5 5600 and the 12400F. And this is gonna both show you why I think these are good enough CPUs for a high-end build if our target is gaming rather than productivity and video editing, that type of thing. And also why I am choosing the 12400 over the 5600. They are very similar in performance, 
But we can see that when you're GPU limited, they're basically going to both be able to support a, a GPU like an RTX 3070 up to 1440p high quality and basically tie because they're GPU limited. But as you increase the, um, the GPU that we're gonna go for here, and in this build, I'm gonna target a high-end GPU, then we might start to see some of the limits of the CPU. And as we get there with the RTX 3080, we see that the 12400F does start to pull a little bit ahead of the 5600. Not a lot, it's a small difference, but so is the price, it's a small difference. Um, and it does look a little bit better here for the 12400F. And then even going up to a 3090 Ti, I think it's interesting here that we can continue to see growth, which shows me that what, I, what I'm reading from this data is that the 12400F can both support a high-end GPU, but it can also support it a little, a little bit better than the 5600 can. And so that's why I'm choosing it when the price is about the same. We can see that at 1080p, um, we, we see a similar thing happening here, although we do get a bit more CPU limited, so it doesn't really support the 3090 Ti very well um, at 1080p. But I would imagine we'd be targeting at least 1440p with this build. And if you're going for 4K, you're again, way more likely to be GPU limited in the first place. And, the, and then the um, uh, going for the higher end CPU is not gonna be that big of a deal. So one of the biggest differences here on my build compared to what you might see elsewhere is that I'm not targeting a, an expensive eight core 16 thread CPU. I think this one is just fine. And you're not gonna see that much of a performance difference going eight cores in gaming, whereas you will see a huge performance difference if we can slot in a better graphics card. Now, um, speaking of uh, memory and budget, so along with the CPU kind of comes your, uh, your RAM choice. Now, honestly, 16 gigabytes in most games is fine, but we have started to see a few games that can, uh, can go over that. And I really think when you're spending a lot on your system, it might be nice to get that 32 gigabytes, as long as you can find it for, for not a crazy amount of money. So the cheapest um, 3200 CL16 uh, memory for 16 gigabytes is around $55, but you can get 32 gigabytes for a little bit under 100. So it's you know a 40 or $50 difference and I do think that 3200 CL16 is perfectly fine unless you're targeting more of an eSports situation where pushing the RAM speeds, and again, budgeting more into RAM speeds and CPU and an overclockable uh, situation and motherboard and all of that, I think makes more sense. Also, to save in this budget, here, here's one of these budgeting choices. The CPU cooler that comes with the 12400F, the stock cooler will run it just fine. You'll get the performance you need. It might not be incredibly cool and it might be a little bit noisy, but it will absolutely work. Now you could buy a $50 cooler that will do a much better job, but that $50 that I'm saving on not buying a CPU cooler here is what's paying for an extra 16 gigabytes of memory. That's how I'm viewing this, okay? So you could cut 16 gigabytes of memory here, you could cut your memory in half and fit in a CPU cooler, but just realize that everything has a trade-off. If you want your CPU cooler, you either need to increase your budget or you have to cut something else. There's no, there's no wiggle room there. You can't have everything without increasing the price. And I'm targeting, like I said, $1,500 here. Now, I think that Modern games take up a huge amount of storage space, so getting at least one terabyte SSD um, is, is really what you should shoot for, but honestly, two terabytes is better. And I was able to find a two terabyte SSD that has pretty solid reviews. It's not the fastest one out there. You could get faster. You could go PCIe Gen 4 and get a much faster drive. But for two terabytes, Honestly, I think in most gaming situations and day-to-day -day use, really honestly anything, a PCIe Gen 3 SSD won't be much noticeably slower than a Gen 4, but it's going to cost you a lot less for two terabytes. So could you spend more on a Gen 4? Yes. Could you save money and go back down to one terabyte? Yes. 
But I think most people with a one terabyte drive are going to fill it up and end up buying more storage in the future. But that's also something you could do. You could just do that in the future if you need to save a little bit of money on it now. Now, the GPU I currently have slotted in here is an RX 6800 XT, and this is the big factor in the build. The GPU is going to be the biggest thing. Now, now you could easily do a 3080 here, but it's going to increase the budget. Also, I think it would have to change the power supply, and I think you'd need to spend more on the power supply. Now, here's what I'm here, here's what I'm talking about. So, uh, and I guess I'll talk about the case here really quick too. I just grabbed a decent case that comes with fans because if you buy a cheap case but it doesn't come with fans, so you have to buy the fans. You usually end up spending more than if you had just bought a case that came with fans in the first place. And the Fantex Eclipse P360A comes with a couple of fans. It's going to at least do the job, and you can buy more fans if if you feel like the cooling isn't where you need it to be. Um, but it's got a good price here. Feel free to sub in any other case, but just keep the fan situation in mind. Now, let's get back to the GPU and the power supply choice here. So this power supply is 850 watts, 80 plus gold. It's fully modular. It's from a trusted brand like EVGA, but it is not one of the higher end EVGA power supplies. And when the RTX 3000 series came out, there were a lot of reports, and I'll, I'll actually pull this up. There were a lot of reports of compatibility issues between this PSU and an RTX 3080 specifically. And I don't know if that has been resolved, but I know that there were a lot of issues with that. But I can't find any reports of an issue of this power supply not working with the 6800 XT. Now, why would that, why would there be a difference there? Well, one ad major advantage that AMD graphics cards have in this current generation over Nvidia is the power draw. And a lot, we were seeing a lot of issues with the 3000 series cards tripping in like an overcurrent issue or something like that, but basically causing a PC to reboot randomly because it would have a transient spike in its power draw. And we weren't having those issues at least not to anywhere near that extent with AMD's high-end graphics cards. And the 6800 XT here, I think should do fine. And at 1440p, it might even be the faster GPU. The main drawback here is going to be ray tracing. So if that's a big deal to you, you could consider switching to a 3080, but it's going to drive the budget up. The 3080 is going to be more expensive. And like I said, I think you would have to buy a more expensive power supply than this one in order to, for me to feel comfortable recommending it. So the build as I have it is just slightly over $1,500. Now, of course, that doesn't include tax, um, you know, or, sh or shipping, although most of this stuff is Amazon, uh, which would be free shipping. And some new egg parts are, are, are free shipping. I think this does, yeah, these, this is, should all be available at free shipping if you have Amazon Prime. Anyway. So here's the thing. Let's look at what if we did want to factor in the RTX 3080, because I know a lot of you, you know, Nvidia has the mind share. You might prefer to go with the 3080. So the cheapest 3080 is only a little bit more expensive, $850. Now this is the 10 gigabyte version. Now you could absolutely do that if we want to add that in here. But again, um, now we're going to be jumping up to, if I kill the 6800 XT, <laughs> we're gonna, jumping up to 1571, or sorry, 1572. Now that might totally be worth it, but like I said, I think this power supply is no longer going to be the one that I would recommend. So now we'd want to jump into the power supply situation here. And we are going to want to sort, let's go price high to uh, low to high. But I'm also going to uh, go to at least 850 watts if we're going to be uh, doing a uh, a 3080, and as you can see here, there's definitely these these cheaper models or lesser known brands. But like I said, with the RTX 3080, especially at the high end, uh, you know, 3000 series cards, power draw issues. That's why I'm not going to go with this nice $90 unit from EVGA. I think I might prefer to go with one of these like Corsair RM or RMX units. Um, but you might want to do a little bit of research on that or see if there's any particular 
uh, particularly good deals. For example, if we go with the Corsair RMX 2020, 20, uh, sorry, 2021, I am confident recommending that one for an RTX 3080. But again, we can see that our build has now increased a bit over $1,600. Now, the other thing I'll mention is that right now, the 3080 12 gigabyte cards are not that much more expensive than the 10 gigabyte versions. So let's actually take a quick look at that. So what if we looked at the 3080 12 gigabyte, or I'll just type in 3080 and we can see the difference, right? So the cheapest 3080s are 10 gigabyte and it looks like 850 right now. But if we go down the first um, uh, 12 gigabyte model that we see pop up here, is 900. Now, I actually think it is worth the $50 difference, especially if you're targeting 4K gaming, because that 10 gigabyte limit, there are already a few games where the high definition texture pack can cause you some issues with 10 gigabytes, especially if you're playing at 4K. And I think going into the future, all we've ever seen with the history of graphics cards is that having more VRAM is better for longevity. That's uh, not even a question at all. And you're not even just paying $50 more for two gigabytes of VRAM. The, um, the card itself actually has a wider memory bandwidth, which actually does lead to some increased performance where we actually see RTX 3080 12 gigabyte cards fall kind of between the 10 gigabyte and the 3080 Ti in terms of performance. And yet the price is only just a little bit more than the 10 gigabyte version currently. Now there was never a MSRP set for the 3080 12 gigabyte. Nvidia never actually set one. So I can't tell you what this is in relation to its MSRP, but I do think if it's only a $50 difference that this would be worth it. But as you can see, we're now pushing $1,650. Now, my last thoughts on this is that the obvious um, weak link to this build is not having a CPU cooler. <laughs> like a lot of people are gonna question that. So you can absolutely throw in a CPU cooler on here if you want, but that's also something that you can buy later if you're not happy with the performance of the stock cooler. Again, my original reason to not go with the CPU cooler here was to keep a $1,500 price on my initial build recommendation. So again, you could save some money here by cutting down to a one terabyte drive. You could spend more by, by jumping up to a uh, PCIe Gen 4. Again, you could save some money by going down to 16 gigabytes of RAM, or you could spend more money by going up to faster timings or spend about the same for faster timings on 16 gigabytes. There's a lot of choices you could make here, but overall, I think if you made this build, uh, if you want that 3080, or if you go down, you know, save 150 bucks and get the 6800 XT, build, I think you'll be happy with either of those at both 1440p or 4K. Although I will say that at 4K, I do think the 3080 is the better choice currently, primarily due to DLSS being more widely available than FSR 2.0. Right now, FSR 2.0 looks great at 4K in the one game I've tested it in, although it has now come out in Farming Simulator 2022. So they have doubled their game support to two games. And I'm, I'm kind of joking about that, but honestly, like, I do expect it to get expanded rapidly, but as of now, DLSS really is necessary for high frame rates at 4K, even on a 3080 in, in most titles. And DLSS quality looks fantastic at 4K, and I think is absolutely worth using. So targeting 4K here, I do think the 3080 is the way to go, but like I said, you are gonna be spending more money on it. I hope all of you have an excellent day.